In Honduras, the death toll is rising from a fire at a prison, and families and human rights advocates are raising concerns about inhumane conditions at the facility and how authorities responded. Today, the number of dead reached 382, according to media reports citing the fire department in Comayagua. The deadly incident sheds light on a deeply flawed judicial system and a pattern of dangerous prison conditions in the country. For more, we're joined by Oscar Estrada. He's a Honduran journalist, lawyer, and documentary filmmaker. His film El Porvenir traces the murder of 69 gang members in a prison in the city of Ceiba. He joins us by phone near Boston. Oscar Estrada, welcome to FSRN. Thank you very much for the invitation. This fire is not an isolated event. It's the third massive prison fire since 2003. What stands out to you about how prison officials responded? I think there's uh, several theories about what this, this happened, but more important than why did this happen is how are the authorities responding to this crisis. We'll see now the government promising again a deep investigation and changing the penitentiary system, but uh, I'm afraid that after what we see in 2003 and 2004, the other incidents on San Pedro Sula and Ceiba, that nothing will be made, nothing will be done uh, to actually make a really change, a real change in the uh, penitentiary system in Honduras. You're referring to uh, pledges made by politicians at the time after the deadly fire in 2003-2004. One of those was now President Porfirio Lobo, who was then the president of Congress. What did he say at the time, and how has that gone so far? At the time, I remember in 2004, the government response it was to give $500 to each family member as, as a compensation by the uh, by their lot, but also as a commitment from the families to not sue the state. And that was actually what they really were thinking about it. And we see not also using it as a campaign for privatization of the jails, but they're not talking the, the actually the, the fact that it's really big American base, military base, in just 10 to 15 minutes from the jail which is the Palmerola military base, and they have uh, equipment for responding to this uh, kind of accident, and they didn't even show up there. We'll talk about that for a moment. Why didn't they? Why didn't they? If they had those equipment and they have personnel, why didn't they show up to help in the, with the fire? Well, they say that the government or the authorities over there never asked them to, uh, which is might be true or not, but the, the fact that also the the, the firefighters in the city of Comayagua, they also said that they were not uh, allowed to get into the jail to actually stop the fire, which is very much what happened in in case of Ceiba, in El Porvenir, and in San Pedro Sula. Just they didn't left the firefighters to get into the building to stop the fire. What about the problem of overcrowding? It's been reported that there were close to 900 prisoners there, and the prison was was designed to hold just 400. Yeah, well, there's, there's been an issue of a uh, higher population in jail since, since I remember. Uh, but I think it's, it's, we have to remember the, the campaign of the government against the youth and gangs members are actually crowded the jails with crimes that are that shouldn't be punished in in jail in the first place. We are talking about a country with high levels of poverty and there's very uh, high levels also of uh, unemployment and criminality in general is raising up and the only solution that they're being given so far is just putting people into jails. And that, of course, will raise the population in penitentiaries. So now they're they're talking about building more jails. 
Well, you're talking about plans to build more jails, but what about the judicial process itself? More than half of the inmates at the Comayagua prison were not even convicted. They were being suspected. They were under suspicion of being gang members or they were awaiting trial. That's according to the AP, which cited a Honduran government report. So what does that say about the judicial process itself and this policy, this anti-gang policy under the current government? Yeah, well, nothing is really working there. So you have a, a, a law system, you have a judicial system which is not able, capable to work through all those cases just because there are so many and there is no support, there is not enough money for investigations, and the money that should go in there are going somewhere else, like corruption. And we, we're facing an increase of militarization of the police uh, as an answer to solution of the problem, which obviously not resolving anything. In your film, El Porvenir, you traced the event that took place at Saiba, another fire and other prisoners that were killed. Do you see any progress or any reforms in the country, in the prison system, since you chronicled that deadly event? Actually, yes. They changed the names. They used to call Gran Penal, and now they call it Penitenciaria Nacional. They changed the roof, and they painted the wall. Then, then, after all, nothing else changed. That's all they did. So you see no, no substantive changes in the system? No, no change, and, and there is no interest in changing anything. Oscar Estrada is a Honduran journalist, lawyer, and documentary filmmaker. His film, El Porvenir, traces the murder of 69 gang members in a prison in the city of Saiba. Oscar, thank you for joining us. Thank you very much for the interview.